Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at how to um, get a export from Mineways into Maya and uh, set it up with the materials correctly. Uh, this is something that I just rendered quickly. It does take a while to render because I've got some nice lighting options set, but you'll see um, the it looks pretty good. Uh, we've got a made some a shader for some glowy lava if you have lava in your scene uh, we have um, really nice shadows and some bounce light so in the cave like where it's small it's really dark um, where it's a bit more open it's a bit lighter uh, the shadows are really nice when there's more and more trees it'll get darker um, when it's open it'll get really bright like a nice sunny day um, the water uh, when we're looking down at the water, it's going to be see-through. As it gets further back, it's going to be reflective. Uh, so it's the water's looking a bit more like real water would. Um, and it's got a bit of a shimmer on there too. Um, so yeah, oh, and another important thing is that we've got all our transparency um, working on our grass and leaves and stuff like that, um, and our flowers. Um, and that's working properly with Mental Ray. So let's close that. And uh, let's have a look. So basically, I've got my scene here, and uh, um, I've imported into Mineways the um, my level. Uh, I'm going to do a pretty big chunk so we can see a fair bit of stuff that's going on. So one thing uh, to note is I think in Minecraft the water level is uh, at uh, 62. We're going to bring it down a bit, uh, our lower depth to 50, so that when we export, um, we've got the bricks under the water as well, so that will give us something to look through. So we're going to go File, Export for Rendering. I'm going to call mine uh, World for Maya OBJ, and we're going to save it as OBJ uh, Wavefront OBJ Absolute. So let's click Save. And then here, most of these settings we can leave how they are as default. But we're going to uh, export material per object. It doesn't really matter because we're going to change most of that and make sure that uh, export separate objects is selected so that trees will be one object, sand will be one object. So each brick is going to be a different type of object. And I changed uh, this make each block to uh, 1,000 millimeters high. Uh, you can keep it smaller, but some of the lighting stuff is going to work a bit better on a big scene um, in terms of like a more real world scale um, and maybe cameras and stuff. If you want everything to look really small, you might want to leave that as a um, smaller setting. But for this case, I'm going to change it to 1000 millimeters height. So we're going to click OK. And uh, this is a pretty large chunk, so that's going to export fairly large. So in Maya, uh, we're going to go to our uh, window settings and preferences plugin manager. We're going to make sure we have two things ticked on. One is OBJ export. So we're going to make sure that's loaded and auto loaded. And then one is Maya to MR or Maya to mental ray. Mental ray and we're going to make sure that that's loaded and auto loaded. So we'll close that. And now to get this the OBJ into the scene, we're going to import it. Don't open the OBJ. Um, we're going to import it. So we're going to go File, uh, Import, and we're going to select our world for Maya. Now, one thing we want to make sure we have ticked on in the options here on the side. Oh, yeah, make sure it's OBJ down here. Uh, one thing we want on the side is make sure it's importing as multiple objects. So Maya can either merge it into one object when it imports it, or we're going to in this case, separate again all the blocks out separately because that's how we exported it from Mineways. So let's import this again. This is a pretty large one, so it might take a sec. And here we have, if we hit five, uh, we can see our, um, our little chunk that I exported. Uh, if we hit six, uh, we can see it shaded. And seven, it'll go black because there's no lights at the moment. So we'll leave hit six and leave it like that. So Let's just quickly uh, render one frame and see what we get. Uh, this is because it's pretty big. The render times on this take 
a while because <laughs> um, I exported such a big chunk. All right, so straight out of the box in Mental Ray, this is what we're getting, and we can see a few issues. So uh, first one is the water is just flat, which is, I guess, okay if you wanted it like that. Um, but we don't really want it like that. Uh, the transparency on nothing is working. Um, the, the textures are blurry, uh, which is not very good for us. Um, we don't have any lighting or anything. I'm rendered this in just standard mental ray. So let's set this up quickly and have a look at what we can do. First off, I'm going to do it how you would connect it manually. Um, and then I've written a script which will run, will basically start again and we'll run the script and uh, that's going to connect all the shaders for us um, and set all the settings up except for the water and the lava which we'll do separately um, because we just want to make a kind of custom shader for the lava glow and then set up some um, attributes for the water to kind of make it look cool. So what's happened here is we've got uh, each um, piece has a shader and it's uh, Mineways has exported a Fong shader and it's got some default settings on it which are not very good for us um, and basically it's got into the color it's got one file connected so the first thing that's wrong with this is that uh, we've got a filter on here which is making it blurry um, which is not very good for us and we've got some some of these settings are not very good for um, what we want to do it's going to blow stuff out um, the shadows aren't going to work correctly and all that sort of stuff so what we can actually do is basically we're going to go assign one shader to this whole thing because most of this is um, Basically, the texture that's exported is everything kind of works from the one texture. So we're going to go and go window uh, rendering editor hypershade, and you can see we've got all these uh, all these materials for each one. But oops, well, yeah, we can make that big; it doesn't really matter. Now we're going to go down to the mental ray section here and we're going to do MIA material X for a material. So this material is designed to work well with some of the attributes in mental ray and um, it should give us a good starting point for, um, for what we want. So we're going to select, keep this window open for a sec and we're going to select all of our geometry here and we're going to right click on our MIA Material X and do Assign Material to Selection. So you'll see straight off that everything has gone like a grey colour. That's because our material is assigned to everything here. So let's just select this material, have a look at some of these attributes. First thing we want to do is our Diffuse. Um, uh, we're going to pick a file for this. So we'll click on this button and click File. We're going to change Quadratic Filter Type to Off. And in our image name, we're going to go to our Minecraft export, wherever we exported our, um, our world to. And we've got three files. We've got Alpha, RGB, and RGBA. And for this, we're going to use RGBA for the moment. So we're going to open that. And now you can see we've got all our colors back. So if we rendered this quickly again, oops, uh, we'll just wait a sec. There we go. So you can, that's a bit off the screen at the moment. You can see now that we've got like a bit more light and dark working better. Um, the colors just look like they're working a bit better as well. Um, we've got a bit of reflectivity here, and actually everything is reflecting, which is not very good. So let's just escape that for a sec. Um, everything is reflecting, uh, even the grass and stuff. 
we'll stop that in a sec, but you can see the lightness and darkness of all the bricks is a fair bit better just even with the default lighting. Our transparency is still not working, so we're going to have a look at that next. So let's select anything because it's got all got the same shader now. We're going to go to MIA Material X. Uh, first off, we're going to turn the reflectivity down to zero, and that and we're going to change the roundness up to 0.2. That's just going to give us a kind of a flat, uh, plasticky, uh, like kind of a matte um, material. So no reflection, no glossiness, any of that sort of stuff. Um, since we've got no transparency or anything, this stuff's not going to matter for the moment. We're going to go down to the advanced section. And we're going to go to cut out opacity and we're going to open this up make another file uh, same thing we're going to turn the filter to off and pick our um, RBGA oh we could probably pick out alpha in this case it'll be maybe a bit cleaner so let's pick that and let's open up let's give a little bit of a bit bigger so you can see it render a small section so now we can see we've got all our grass is being transparent which is really cool our trees should be as well so that's really cool so that's something that's been set up really nice um, the water is transparent uh, we're gonna do the water differently in a sec um, so if we wanted to just use this, this is probably going to be okay. Um, if we just wanted to use this, uh, what we could do is basically go to our render settings, go indirect lighting, create a physical sun sky. And uh, if we go to our outliner here, hit W, we can kind of see where our light, whoops, light is and move it up. If we hit seven, we can kind of see a bit better of the lighting. So if we um, hit E, I'm going to rotate this light around like that. Um, that should get us something kind of decent. Um, one thing we're going to go back to our uh, hypershade here. So if you couldn't find a window rendering at it as hypershade, and just for something quick, uh, we're going to go here to Utilities and click here. There's an MIA Exposure node. We're just going to change this down to 1 for a second. So this is probably the gamma. Changing it to 1 is probably a bit of a hack-up way of doing things. Um, usually what we'd do, we'd put a gamma node between each texture. Um, but just for a quick render and stuff, this should be OK. So now... If we render this, let's give it a go and see what we get. So we should get some pretty decent results kind of straight out of the box. It's going to take a little bit longer to render. Um, when we click the physical sun sky, it um, it's put a few settings on. So it's turned on final gathering in the render settings. Um, so light's kind of bouncing around a bit. So in the shadows, the shadows won't be 100% dark. Um, they'll be a bit better. So one thing to remember is we've got one shader on every single thing at the moment, uh, which is not a very good way to do it. So after this renders, what we're going to do is I'll show you um, how to use a little script that I wrote. It's going to go through basically and assign a shader to everything, set up some more advanced settings, uh, which I'll go through uh, on every single object. And then after that, we'll go through and make a shader. I will tweak the shader for the water and then to make that look kind of good. And then we'll make um, a shader for the lava so it'll glow and it doesn't like get shadows and all that sort of stuff because lava would never do that. So yeah, that off the bat, is a pretty nice result. It's taking a fair bit to render. I mean, this is a pretty heavy scene. Uh, there's a lot of, even we're just rendering this small bit, but I actually exported like a massive chunk. So if you want to um, 
get it faster, you'd want to export a smaller bit. So yeah, that's pretty nice results. We've got all our transparency and stuff working. It's a little bit dark in the back here. We'll fix that up in the next bit when we do it properly. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. The water looks a bit crappy. I mean, if you were just doing something quick, that water might be okay. But we want to get some nice reflection on there and where it gets like deeper in the water, maybe we'll make that a, as the water gets thicker, um, loses its transparency, we can do that sort of stuff. Um, and we want to put a little bit of a bump map on there to use that reflection to make the reflections really nice. So there we go. So for uh, it's a two and a half minute render, oh, just over two and a half minutes, um, almost three minutes, and we're getting pretty nice results already. So let's go and have a look at how to use a script and put all this together a bit more nicely.